You go out on a date. It moves closer to home. You get down to the couch. It's a little frisky. You go to the bedroom. Ah, you're getting intimate. You reach in. You go, oh, wait a second. Let me, I got to pull out my swab. I got to check your past history because I'm not sure about your STDs. That's what we're going to cover. Join us. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Grab the bull. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. You might even get a little bit dirty. Warning. This podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. Okay. Boom. Wow. Again. Well, I'm Nick, folks. I'm Dan. Me, the old classic Nick. Dan. And our little and guest. And... Susanna. That's Susanna. You've all known her. You've all seen her. She's been here before, folks. Yeah. We're back at it. And this time, we're going to tackle the big issue, that burning sensation when you pee. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure Nick has HPV to rhyme his last sentence. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's been accused before. We don't throw these terms around lightly. I hope. I hope. By, by me or by another lover? Uh, someone. <laughs> Another <my> lover? <laughs> Another lover, man. It's out there. It's pretty obvious. Our chemistry is supernatural. Super tight. So, for those who might not know, Susanna is a biology like whiz kid. Oh my God. A wonderkind? I'm glad you went with that instead of like, Susanna knows like a lot about STDs. <laughs> She's been around. She yeah. can spot them from a mile away. Oh, folks. yeah. I can tell you the signs, symptoms, and whether they're gram-negative or gram-positive bacteria. Oh, Damn. Boy. That gets me hot. Yeah, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there, actually, this touches on something I did a little research. There are actually communities that are into um, women with, like, sores on their body and stuff. Some of it's, like... Um, communities? Leper community, but I think some of it's like uh, maybe herpes related. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, like you can find you, you, that's a deep rabbit hole. Where you're looking up leper sex. Well, I, I was just doing research for this episode, folks. But let me tell isn't you, isn't that the Carville, Carville, in Louisiana? That's they have a small leper colony. So oh, that's the place colony. with the hospital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. There's like a leper colony, and they all hang out in this big hospital, and no one visits them, and no one leaves, and it's like it's like a nursing home for and lepers. Interesting and and we all know what crazy. happens in nursing homes. <laughs> <laughs> STDs, my man. The squeaky chair. <laughs> the squeaky chair is key to that. Yes, it was. Yeah, that was really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we going to talk at all about STD versus STI? Is there actually? You actually know the reason why? So what? STD, sexually transmitted disease. STI, sexually transmitted infection. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. I thought they were kind of interchangeable. Is there a reason or is it? No. So it's a good point. So what they wanted to do with this is that like you can have chlamydia, but no disease, right? Like that's pretty common in mm-hmm. men where they, they have the bacteria and they can give it to other people, but they never show symptoms. And carrier. So not like they're carriers. Yeah. yeah. You're a carrier. Hmm. So it's not technically a disease unless you have any symptoms. Really? So that's why. Because people were getting kind of like, oh, well, I haven't had any problems, so why should I get tested? Mm. And so that was kind of a, a way to, to move into that space of like, you might not have a disease, but you still might be infected with something. You're nasty. You need to get tested. Mm. You need to bathe more. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a fact. If you just bathe, STDs usually wash right off. Yeah. Mostly if you bathe in like, <sighs> it's going to take <laughs> It's going to take like a week. <laughs> Sign a will, <laughs> hand over all your paperwork. Don't do that. Legally, no, please. please, God, <laughs> please, <Yeah>. God. My <laughs> son listened to your podcast, and now he's nothing but bones. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry, don't, man. don't, don't bleach, so don't sorry. douche. I don't know how fast we got into this, but like, it was quick. that doesn't do it either. <laughs> it just so moves it around, are, really. Like, I need to be clean, and your body is going to do its best. And honestly, mm-hmm. if you're like putting random liquids up there, squirting then, around, we call yeah, that squirting not, around. It's not going to be good. It's not. It's going to increase your likelihood of being able to get something. So. Swirling the old bacteria viral uh, petri dish in there. So, you guys might not actually know this. STIs, STDs actually can come in bacterial or viral form. I know. That just blew your mind, didn't it? What? Mm-hmm. Are you more familiar with the bacterial ones, Suzanne? Uh, I've taken classes on all of it, actually. So, I did my undergrad at the University of Iowa, and I have my Bachelor's of Science in Microbiology. So, Oh, that's true. I actually got to work on herpes virus. Hell in yeah. One of my labs. That was like Which a whole boyfriend class. was this? An X? An XX? Oh, I'm sorry. You meant like the strain. I apologize. That's, that's actually, that, yeah, that would work. That joke would actually work. But uh, let's jump to herpes. Um, the most like common, it's, isn't it? Well, it depends, right? Like one is really common, but the second one is, it's, I mean, it's still uh, really common, but it's so much What do they call it? Herpes simplex com and then HSV1, HSV2. Thank you. Herpes simplex vi- virus one and two. Um, and it's worth noting that, uh, you know, okay, so there's a bunch of things about herpes. One is that like chicken pox is a type of herpes virus. It's like a whole <laughs> category of virus, <laughs> but we're, really interested in these two. So they named them HSV one and HSV two herpes simplex virus. So basically HSV one, at least 90% of the adult population has that it's pretty commonly passed to you before you're like really even at all an adult, just sharing water bottles and and kissing even. It's a little lip sore. Yeah. Yeah, so anybody you've ever seen with like a little lip sore, that's probably what it is, whether or not they know it. Point um, to it in public and let them know. I mean, it's the only polite thing to do because if they don't know, they could be just walking around with it. It's disgusting. Let herpes. them know. Is that, is that herpes on your face? Like, sir, yeah. sir, sir. Is this herpes? <laughs> <laughs> You're in the yeah. bank. He's like, what? You're like, herpes. <laughs> Uh, that is actually the best part about working with like microbiologists is that when you get a herpes sore, you just put the medication on it and you don't have to do the thing where you like put medication on it and then hide it Carmex. for like an hour until it all soaks in and everyone's hmm. like, yeah, it's herpes. Let's move on. Is it Carmex um, or whatever? What is that stuff called? Uh, uh, the ointment? The lip? Yeah. The lip balm? That was one yeah, of the methods of transmission. Name, it's like really? sharing a drink. You can share lip balm oh, with people and get it lip too. Balm. I wish I could share lip balm with people. Yeah, the famous one? What? Yeah. Lip, yeah. Lip, Lister, yeah. Lister or Carmax. It's either begins with L I S or like C A R. That just makes your lips shiny. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, I get the knockoff brand anyway because it's so expensive. Oh is my it? god, it's like this big and it's like $25 and I lose it every single time. And then that's mm. one of those things that you don't want to have to go to the store to get it when you need it because you've got Good like point. an eight hour window to when you're like, ah, it's kind of itchy. Oh shit. That's when you got to have that on there. So two things. One, do you have to like this type one turn into type two sometimes, or it's a whole different virus? That's a good question. No, totally different virus. Okay. So um, they're not even related to each other. Huh? So, you, so they're not related to each other. So no, you can they, have, they are related. It's just okay. they turn into each other. So the virus itself, um, like their gen- their genes are different enough mm-hmm. um, that they are they're very different, and so a lot of times HSV one is called oral herpes. They yeah. form those cold sores. Um, it is possible to get an outbreak uh, in your genitals, but basically oral herpes HSV one is really suited to being in your mouth. It would rather be in your okay. mouth. That your environment. Mouth. What if you mouth sex a person with mouth herpes? <laughs> But your genitals were the ones that, in the mouth herpes area. Yeah. Can so you, you, can, then, you can, especially like the first time you get it, you can definitely break out in both places. Huh. Uh, so, but the thing is, is that if you ever have something like that happen and you're not sure. So if you ever think you might be exposed to herpes, uh, you definitely want to get tested. Um, just, just JIC. 
just in case, just in case, just in case. And then also it's like good to know. Um, but you also like nobody, honestly, like there's a lot of reasons to not want to get STIs, but one of my biggest reasons is that I dread that day of like calling people up and being like, Hey, Hey, uh, haven't talked in, Oh my God. What's it been? Five days. I just found out some bad news. You might want to go. I know we had great coffee. Uh, the name of the place, Castranos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they do. a uh, great dish. Might have a little herpes. We can go get another. Uh, yeah, we can go get coffee. I'll buy it for you. I'll buy yeah, the coffee. I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's just like I don't want to do that. Yeah. So one of the elements. If, you, if like, you have HIV, like, do you have to like call everyone? I don't know that, that it's with, a or? legal requirement to call the people that you did have sex with, but oh. if. You're planning to have like sex moral. with somebody. You have to reveal it to oh, them. Oh, you have to. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, illegal yeah, yeah. too. We're not going to skip ahead, but Dan, relax. We're not. Oh, and two, oh, oh, I remember number two. The CVS guy or girl knows so much about you. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to buy this Preparation H. It's for a friend of mine, not for my hemorrhoids. Oh, I'd like to buy this lip balm for herpes. Simplex one, mind you. It's for a friend of mine. It's not for me. You say it with a sore on your face. You're like, I'd like to buy this extra soft toilet paper. Hm, it's for a friend of mine. It's not for me. Like you buy all your like bad you stuff. Conversations with your like convenience store person. <laughs> well, I talk to everyone. So if you're buying something, like I have to explain it. Oh, these baby size condoms. <laughs> single thing. It's for a friend of mine. <laughs> it's for my son. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want him to practice safe sex. So I'm teaching him. <laughs> you can't get that and the herpes medication at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot. So I'm reporting you. For what? You can't spread that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, like morally with things, like I, I don't know, just don't be a horrible person. Like if someone's giving you access to their body, like I think that you owe it to them to just like treat nah. it with respect or as mm-hmm. much respect as they want. Um, so. You know? And so like, I don't, I don't know people who are like, yeah, just whatever. Um, so yeah. HSV one, 90% of people have it. Okay. Uh, HSV2, I think it's like one in six. Um, Even that sounds high, but yeah, it's one of the more common ones. How many do you, how many people do you think know have it? Like not people. Good that, point. Like how do they, oh, how do they know it's themselves? It's got to be less than that. It's got to be. Oh, how many do I know? Or oh, how many? No, no, not <laughs> really. <laughs> of the people that actually have, have it, it, how many do you think know they have it? 80? 60%? Less than I would guess 60 to 80. Maybe, maybe. So that's the idea of like the STI versus STD is that uh, a lot okay. of people, they really men. don't get much. Say, or they get, say it is. It's men. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, more. Dudes, like, I feel like women, we're just so freaked out by everything down there all the time that anything goes wrong. We're like, I'm dying. I'm horrible. I'm disgusting. More can go wrong. Do you know why? Huh? Do you know why more can go wrong with women? Hey, because of the environment down there. Whoa. We're talking like, oh, Lush forest, beautiful <laughs> rain forest. It's like the it's Amazon. Amazing how different Got a lot of organisms, life forms. <laughs> the um, no, no, no. I kept coming up with this one. It was like that, uh, and I actually wrote it down. I was like, "What the hell?" They have cervical ectopy. A lot of them. A lot of women. Cervical ectopy. It's where your um, columnar col- columnar cells are exposed in the back of the cervix. It's very common. It's like not a natural thing, but it, there's no other health risk except that these cells are super susceptible to be infected so that women have one extra, not barrier, the opposite, one extra area that's very susceptible to different strains of viruses or bacteria. You type it in, Dan, you're looking up cervical activity. Yeah. So plus they have like some nice warm breeding groundy area that guys don't have as much. It is true. It is true. And also you think of transmission of fluids, it's going in one direction usually. Yeah. Well, more in one direction, but the band, one direction. <laughs> women, women love. <laughs> it's based off of? Yeah, women love to get STDs to some of their fa- their big hits. I can't get into all of them because I don't know all their hits, but. You're probably right. There could be a study on that of like, what is the transmission rate? Adoring One Direction concerts? <laughs> did, you guys see the, did you guys see the Coachella thing? No, I didn't. No. Coachella is in town, I guess. Uh, this just came out spreading. today. Ah, so we're talking about herpes. 
Uh, Coachella is in town, I guess, this weekend. Uh, this will be released a year afterwards, so who cares? <laughs> It'll be the, this, great. This will work out perfect. Coachella will be back in town. Yeah. Um, they usually um, see around 120 or 100 cases in a week or something in Southern California, where this area is, of new outbreaks that they determine are herpes. Um, they noticed a 2,083% increase in herpes cases in the surrounding three or four hospitals in the area. They've pronounced 1,105 cases in Southern California in the past week, and they're pretty sure it's related to Coachella. So huh. Coachella, go get you like some an Epidemiologist herpes. dream, like of all these like random yeah. statistics and matching up with Coachella. They're just one, running around swabbing. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, concerts, etc. can do it, I guess. I do want to like, it's so funny the way that we treat STIs, right? Like, so I, I bring up the fact that herpes, like chicken pox is a herpes virus, right? Like uh, varicella zoster. And but people are proud of it. I'm They're pretty like, sure my mom pox? forced me to get chicken pox when I was younger. I think that was the goal. <laughs> Yeah, that's she not going to work. You. She put you near. She put you near. <laughs> You've already. His yeah. mother actually Who knows? forced him. No one knows yet. <laughs> Find that one guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah. laughs> <But> like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you get chicken pox. Like, somebody gets chicken pox. You're like, oh, that sucks. Like, oh. No, they're even proud of it. It's, it's like the hour. They're almost like, I got chicken pox. Now it's like, yeah. oh, my God, herpes has this stigma. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, it's just like, you know, any cold we get, it's because we shared space with somebody. I understand it's the sex part, but it's really interesting to me that, like, still in this day and age where fucking everyone fucks everyone, um, you know, that's not exactly true, but, like, a lot of people are having sex. I'm sex with a lot of people. I agree. Like, it sells music. It's, It's everywhere that we still have this idea of, like, Ooh, the unclean person, or especially the unclean woman. It's um, it's coming. It's because of sex again, for the exact same reasons that we kind of just discussed. Because you know, yeah. but what's weird is I'm not usually like that. But even when I was googling these things and writing things down and everything, they skeeve me for some reason. But I'm also skeeve? like, yeah, skeeve, skeeve, skeeved out. Oh, creeped out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Skeeved. Welcome to 2019. <laughs> or 2020 when this is released. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, no, like something about um, genital injuries, really. It's oh, like, yeah. you know, some things give you the, the weird balls. feelings. Well, like a kick to the balls or like scraping metal on uh, like a metal fork on the bottom of a metal bowl. Ooh. Mine is uh, slamming fingers in doors. I can't even think about it. Like I have to actively. It's so not. weird because I don't think about it ever. But yeah, that's I see what you're saying. <laughs> Ooh, do you ever? Um, do you guys hold on to your phone or whatever you have in your hands really tight when you um, step out of an elevator because that tiny little gap? Okay. Oh, I swear to God, no! I'll look down and I'll be like, "Don't drop it! Don't drop it! Don't drop it!" And I purposely like walk over it in a way that I will not drop that phone, which has a one in a billion chance of actually falling perfectly and yeah. fitting through that, which it probably doesn't even fit, but. And that's something you can see. You can willingly that's a good point. decide to avoid it. Yeah. That's why I take the stairs now. I've gotten in great physical shape from just taking the stairs, folks. Just take the stairs. You lose weight automatically. Uh-huh. Boom. There you go. But there, there are no, well, are there stairs in this case? Like what? What would be the analogy to Spears? Oh, okay. safe sex. Virginity. <clears throat> Condoms. Abstinence. Saving yourself okay. for marriage. Dental dams. You see. Saving yourself for Jesus. <laughs> Do people use those? I don't. I've always heard like you're supposed to in situations. Uh, I want to save this for the end because I have some props. Okay. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> a dental, dental dam. Oh, no, I, I, if I had thought about it before tonight I mean, it pretty when much I was doing good. other things, I would have went to the store and bought a dental dam. Like, uh, anyway, we'll get into that. Yeah, well, you guys, so I'm on a college campus. You can get, like, all, like, they have dental dams. Great. Like, just like, laying around. Gift basket, yeah. Essentially. I got one one time, and I just, because I was just like, what is it? And I was like, it's a giant condom. Like, that's all it is. And I kind of, I got to say, like, part of it, I like the idea. Like, honestly, if they could create a dental dam that you could put in at the start of the night and just not worry about it, that would be ideal. Like that. I don't even know how that would work. I don't know. Cause I mean, the, the issue is like, right. So women are more susceptible. The other thing too, is that this has happened 
more than a couple times where you're messing around with a guy and suddenly his dick's inside you. And then you got this situation where like, what do you do? Be like, uh, bat, like, I mean, what you can and probably should do is be like, stop. We need to do something. Forever. We got something we got to do. There's a protection Paperwork, situation. Chill out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Send out your test. Wait a few weeks. Get it back. No, you're yeah, but like, 100% right. Who's going to the heat of the moment? Stuff's going on. Is that part of you're forms gonna, now? Like if you go to like match.com, does it ask you if you have STDs? Is like, I know there's, um, mm-hmm. oh, what was that? website for meeting hiv positive it was like b positive something yeah. so that's different because of the legal requirement to announce that beforehand mm, i don't yeah. know if the onus yeah. is on the website to ask but that it's one's not that intended for those people exactly because there's an onus i don't know i wish it was talked about more right because like yeah if it's one in six or so and you've dated 20 people, you dated at least three people who that have an STD or have okay. had an STD. Oh, no, it's I think it's higher for how many people have had. Well, like uh, okay, so like herpes is one in six have at the time. Well, you never get rid of herpes. Is that oh, because it's viral? No, I mean, it, there's some viruses that'll go away, but so, no, no, because it's viral. Like, are the viral ones the ones that kind of stick around? Hangs and on your you nerves, have to right? Fight? So it stays actually in in your body. It stays in your cells. It actually becomes part like you, it stays in your cells. So you just carry the herpes with you everywhere. So Sweet. certain viruses, like the cold, um, it it attacks your cells, but it doesn't. It's not going to stay in your cells. But herpes, once it's in, it is in. You can't get it out. Same with HIV. Like so, someone, anyone who ever has gotten herpes has herpes. Hmm. So. I guess that's why it's as high a number as it is. Yeah, exactly. It's makes like sense. you get it once, you're done. Right? Um, yeah, that makes sense. The, um, one of my studies came that young people aged 15 to 24 are responsible for 50% of all so new cases sex. of STDs. They have STIs. old sex. Uh, herpes is a 1 in 13 from this oh, one okay. website. Good. Well, that's just that's, one disease. <laughs> and that's also just one website. Yes. Yeah, it depends. So at 18 to what age? 34, 24? A, no, 15 to 24. 15 to 24. That's like the hop in time. So does that and mean also that they... Think of this. Well, so there's a reason for this. They think that um, 15 to 24, you're kind of under legal guardianship. So if you went to go take a test, A, you need to sign all your paperwork over to your parents. They're going to oh, mail the results to your parents. B you're probably not going to go at 16 by yourself to the, like to get tested. You know what I mean? That's pretty yeah. scary. Mm-hmm. Cost money. You don't have, yeah, you just, it costs money. You don't have, it's scary. You, you probably can't even drive yet. You know, you're 16. You just like, I got to get tested. You're not going to ask your parents for that reason. You're very scared. And then there's misinformation at that age. And then on top of that, there's a uh, trying to get hormones laid. running around. Hell yeah. So it's like a combination of crazy stuff going on. It's like the wild west. It's like the, it's the damnedest time. You got to be careful. I don't know that. I know for me, the first time I had sex, I was not thinking about anything else other than having sex. So it was like, yeah, it's not like you're like you're like, whoa, whoa wait a second, uh, think about the rec. Got my Excel spreadsheet out. Here. Let's go over the checklist. Make sure it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. Sure. Well, and the other thing too that no one like, no one talks about that much, and I don't know very many people who actually take it into account is that like oral sex spreads diseases. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. y- you can get, you can get STIs from oral sex. Yeah. Oh and, my goodness. General to mouth, yeah. mouth to general, hand to mouth, hand to eye, mouth to ass, analingus, <laughs> analingus, That's, mm-hmm. ass to nose. Everyone should ass check to, out the Wikipedia page for analingus because the picture Go ahead. What is it? <laughs> it's a, it's kind of erotic, even though it's a cartoon. It has good shading uh, on it. Are they doing like? Is it? Are they all into it? I think it's. it's can you share it with just woman. our podcast thing, like on this? I guess I can. I think you can. I don't know. Anyway, seventy percent um, of all syphilis is actually um, transferred in the homosexual community, men to men. 
and it's because of oral sex, they said. So like different groups are at different um, danger rates because of just practices. Um, certain things travel better vaginal to penal, uh, anal to mouth, mouth to penis. I just want to say all those terms back to back. <laughs> I didn't have stats on those. But like you think about it, depending on your gender and your practices and who you're going with, you have different different rates for what you can get, percentages. I'm going to cover Nick's Ooh. face with this image. Okay. Oh, this is just for the podcast viewers. <clears throat> Don't forget oh, to take it down. Sometimes he forgets to take down an image. And if it's up there for the rest of the episode, that's going to be a quick be... one. That's pretty hot. There you go. This is a quick shot. I'm going to show it to you guys in a second. Oh, okay. okay I was like, well, that was I, exciting. I can't. It's still over my face. <laughs> Everyone, look, I'm analingus. Wait, where's that? <laughs> oh, that's really great. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. That's, that's a bit much for Wikipedia? Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. Thinking cool. other thoughts. I was like, and this comes from spreading Wikipedia. sexual diseases. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, look at that. Get you some uh, pink eye. <laughs> Stink eye, pink eye, baby. <laughs> yeah. Woo! That's what I call it. Sometimes I get it every Sunday from myself. You know, you can get <laughs> pink eye from yourself. It's poor wiping you, strategy. Uh, you cup your farts front to back. Right in your eye. Back yep, to front. Right there. Woo! <laughs> I don't know if that last one was true. You know, my roommate, uh, I had a roommate once where she actually thought you could get HIV from a toilet seat. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of horrified. But then it was like what was taught at her school. There are so many places. And so it makes sense, right, that people are not using protection for the right things. One, it's not fun. No. Like all those commercials of like, it's like nothing's there. It's like, no, no. No, there's no a big piece of latex there. Um <laughs> But then also, if you don't have any idea, if you think that literally everything is going to get you diseases, then what's the point of protecting yourself in some cases? Or the opposite of if you have no idea that... You're just going to go wild and not look out for yourself at all. Yeah. If you're for like, other people. Yeah, I'm just giving ahead, so it doesn't matter. I don't ever need to get tested. Mm. I think that's the thing I worry about is not so much the practices of like what they do, but it's the fact that we're not pushing people to get tested enough. Like that should be something that is an opt out system at your physicals where they're like, we just always do the little swab for oh, yeah, at the end. Like, <clears throat> yeah. I had to actually ask her one of those. Like, one of the, like for no reason at all. I was just like, I want to do that. And he's like, well, okay. And they don't like, I think they only did the minimum. There's like a small test that covers like five, but you should really be covering like 10 of them. And it doesn't, yeah. I guess it, cost money and they don't uh, they it's always about money, money. Mm-hmm. it's i don't know it's yeah. strange but then again you don't have any guidance too because like schools are not federally mandated to teach you sex ed in a certain way like there's no guidelines oh, i was gonna it. say aren't they they're they're mandated to do it just there's no guidelines for it is yeah. that kind of how it works and then if you go to like a religious school the religious school will add the bias to like stay abstinent like you're a piece of gum that just got chewed you don't want to commit like adultery all sorts of like it just like scares the crap oh, out of you by wait, going over wait, never over. heard the gum yeah. one no like a piece of piece of gum or like so like if you if you're a woman and you're having sex this is the implication that they try to put in your gum. brain yeah they're like your gum if you have sex you no longer you're are chewed. chewable by other square 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 <laughs> I just feel like so. Much I see what you're saying, but that's like it. it's brutal. That's like a one and done, dude. That's a one and done. You can't. Yeah, I mean, there's some uh, flavor left in the gum, but uh, you can't like the third time around, the fourth time around. You don't get any enjoyment out of the gum anymore. You know, I really think that these rules were made by men who didn't want to face up to the fact that they weren't good in bed, or <laughs> like, their wives were sleeping <laughs> around I don't with only them. Fuck women who have never slept with anyone else, because all I'm hearing is like, yeah, the second time you chew that gum, you gotta work a little harder mm-hmm. you know yeah. so uh well, think about this maybe they know their wives were cheating on them and this is their way of getting back at them yeah that, yeah the that, second that. one she always does makes her a dirty rotten piece of gum it's like, Whoa, <laughs> wow, i think you've got an issue i think that's a great insult now though you are a disgusting <laughs> someone else has already chewed you goodbye mm-hmm so um, STD rates were actually on the decline in the United States for like like 50 years straight, right? Until Coachella, right? 
No, until 2013. Wow. I have no clue what the significance of the year. When did or... Coachella start? We don't know. Oh, that's, that's a really good question, but I feel like it's... Oh my God! How crazy would be at Coachella? Yeah, it's just, this has to be bigger than Coachella. We we cracked the code tonight, uh, ninety nine, but it didn't get big until twenty thirteen. <laughs> so since the twenty thirteen to like twenty seventeen, like even I, I don't I didn't get the uh, study from twenty eighteen yet. They haven't emailed me yet. They haven't given me a call on my uh, telephone. This is a telephone, kids. Okay. Um, yeah, by the time this podcast comes out, they might, <laughs> they might have implants, chips, people be doing flying cars, whatever. Um, syphilis has doubled in the United States. Ooh, syphilis. Now, it was a lower number, but I think doubling is it's significant. Gonorrhea is up 67%, and chlamydia is maintaining record highs. Uh, I think they report 1.7 million cases a year. Wait, when did Tinder come out? Oh. Mm. Uber, Uber Eats. <laughs> Let's just stay in and bang. Oh, I think you're on to something. Epidemiology, mm. baby. I really? Ooh. I think he did it. <laughs> Damn. I don't give Dan credit a lot because, like, that it's like a competition good. thing, but that's pretty good. Uh-huh. I think he did it. I think it's Tinder. Blame Tinder for all these STDs. I wonder if they well, the they rise of them. Hold them legally responsible for spreading it to everyone in the United States. Is it like? You know, if it's a Tinder hookup, you you, you should know have, going into it. Yeah, well, you might not have had so many conversations. Like mm-hmm. usually, you left your latex up. suit. Does it at home? What? You left your latex suit at home. Yeah. No. What about like your you're saying conversations though? Like, do people? I guess you bring it comes up. Oh God, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, never mind. You crack oh, the door uh, open and the chain's still taut, and you go, "How many STDs do you have?" And they say none, and you open it up. If they say two, you just like slide a piece of paper. Them anyway, to be totally honest, like usually the people that you meet off of Tinder, um, it's not like it's all the same people you meet on other platforms. Like I think we've talked about this, where but they're sleazier. They're ready. Well, to- they're just like yeah. There's like lower expectations of you to be a decent human. Um, plus you might not have that long of a conversation with them and someone mm-hmm. that you've gone on two or three dates with one, you don't want to have a situation with them. That's really uncomfortable. So you don't, you certainly don't want to give them an STI. You don't want to like, you just have this connection with this person person at that point. But also it might be more comfortable at that point to say, Hey, I'm really uh, excited for this. I have HSV2 versus someone that you met that afternoon and you're like, well, it's snowpocalypse and we're all going to die anyway. It's fine. That is interesting. I never considered that because I'm not in the uh, online dating scene, but like you're, you've created a friendship too, sort of, or like a network connection. Whereas like back in the day, if you met at the bar, you're, you can just not go back to that bar for a while or something. Now you still have that online presence. They kind of know who you are. So like, Hmm. Yeah. There's a little more familiarity. Not like a lot, but a little more. Like you're Maybe. You know. But like I would feel more comfortable with someone that I, you know, had a couple dates with. Mm-hmm. When you get in that situation, right, where it's like moving real fast and there's a miscommunication or something, and you're like, whoa, 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 we're you we're using condoms. I'm more comfortable doing that with somebody that I've had four conversations, conversations with. with. Right. Yeah. Like it'll come up versus somebody sense. you just met, it might just be a I don't know what's happening. Makes sense. Which like not to downplay what I'm saying, because I have told this to people before and they're like, that's technically rape. And it is. Um, But I also don't want to be like, well, that would never happen because it has happened several times. Um, I it's, it's just part of existence. Like I've literally been dancing with someone before had never even turned around to see them and they were like, they had their hand on my leg and the next thing I knew they had their fingers inside of me. And so it's just like, just, just like the shit we get used to. So I don't want to pretend like it's not a big deal because it is, but at the same time, I don't want to not bring it up because it's a big deal. I just, just like, well, shit happens. Like guys will put their dick in you and suddenly you've already been exposed it's already uncomfortable. You just, you probably just want to get out of that situation. So I just think we, we judge people real fast about the decisions they make in a, in a instant where they are literally underneath another person. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of these, all of these conversations around STIs, I think they get really like 
well, you know, just use a condom. How hard is it? It's a tiny piece of rubber. And it's like, yeah, no, 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 that's true. But the implications of having to like negotiate yourself out of a situation you're already in and still feel safe and comfortable, you know, I think that we need to have better options. So two things I'd like to bring up. One, we've all seen this device. Okay. It's kind of, I probably brought this exact I brought this exact one probably on this podcast like four times. We're going to do it. Whoa. Are you going to do this? Yeah, I want to do it because I want to show everyone something very funny. And you're looking in the dark. You can't even find this thing. You're trying to find the expiration date because you bought it back in high school. You got to check it. Make sure it's all in all together. 2020. We're good. Pinhole in the middle. 2020. That's the hottest thing you can do is rip it with your mouth, right? Problem is, if you do it in the dark, I just got a corner. <laughs> How am I going to get it out? I'm not going to. So now I got to do this. Hold on. That's too small. <laughs> got it. And then she goes, okay, hurry up, right? Hurry up, hurry so up. now you do this. It's still dark. Oh, for still you. dark. Oh, yeah. Come on. Hurry do up, Nick. Hurry. Put it yes. in. Put it in. Put it on. Then you do this. Well, you didn't You didn't <laughs> pinch. The, oh, you got to lift and then pinch. No, the it's on the wrong side. No. It's on the wrong side. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Is it, oh, is it, is it? That's where you forgot the loop okay. and it starts to pinch. So maybe the first two times I used a condom, <laughs> I was very young. I did this and I was like, "It's on." It doesn't fit. It, it doesn't. It doesn't work. <laughs> I may or may not have had sex. Okay, without it, without it, we took it off. And I was so proud for two to four weeks because I was too big for condoms. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> look, I was like. <laughs> Oh, hey, I buy the bigger ones. This happens all the time because you it's dark, everything's going crazy. Look, folks. Flipper. Yeah, pinch. You got to pinch. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to pinch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Whatever. leave air in there. Look at that. Boom, folks. That would make a condom work. Yeah. Can you believe that certain schools My aren't allowed to teach that? Has to, the microbiologist side has to say, like, you don't, everyone does it. You don't want to flip it. Like, I do it. But technically, you can get exposed that way. So I don't know that anyone ever has. Like, I don't know that that is. Wait, because you've already touched your penis and then you flip it afterwards. Because usually there's some pre ejaculation. You have microbiomes, right? It's already there. It's already there. Anyway, Uh, this bad boy. I had a question for you guys, actually. Because this is like one of my least favorite things about condoms is when dudes. I've never tasted a condom in my life. It's gross. Yeah, how'd it taste? Get it all the way in there, Nick. <laughs> yeah, get it in the back of your throat. No, 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 no. But I will. I'll taste it, banana. <laughs> to prove a point. Uh-uh. Ugh. Leaves a residue. Oh, my God. You've been enlightened. I would never give oral sex with a condom. <laughs> That's the grossest thing I've ever... But you've no, never tasted a penis healthy. either. So you know what's great? What's the your mouth is going to taste like that. Your mouth is going to taste like that for like a day and a half. Like you're How gonna am I going to explain that to my parents? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Why are it's they talking to you? Well, no, no. They're just kissing me on the lips. It's what we do every time I see my parents. We're Italian. Nikki, come kiss us. We get handsy too. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Yeah. Terrible. And I kind of thought that was the case, but – now I know. So you're, you're telling me the only way to prevent it also tastes like that, by the way, when you take off a condom, oh, really? it tastes you're like, oh, oh no. I, was, office, I was like, like wait. Dentist office. Yes. Dental. It tastes like huh. rubber gloves, mm-hmm. latex gloves. Mm-hmm. Most dentists are switching to nitrile gloves. Now nitrile is a much better substance, but it's still not. No one like wants the chew on or suck on nitrile. Hmm. They are pricier. Nitrile is like oh. eight ninety five a box, seven fifty for latex. Just from what I would guess to me. But I, I do have a question though. Yeah. Like, so oh my God. one, like much prefer when guys just put on the condom, like a hundred thousand percent because I right they're gonna do it. it. No, no problems. Let's go for it. Thank yeah. you first. Good show. But, like, some guys want you to put on the condom, and worse, they want you to put it on with your mouth. No. What is, what is this about? So, yeah, purpose, you just right? experienced this. Mm-hmm. feel like, That's oh, not bothered. It'd be like, ooh, would not do it. let me do this. Ugh. No. Ugh. What I can't believe is that certain schools can't teach you that. They can't show you putting a condom on a banana because it's sexually explicit. What? Yeah. <laughs> there was one teacher. 
I know there's a couple kids at home from Kentucky watching this going, <gasps> oh, not allowed. Wait, did you take your condom off your banana? Absolutely. I take it right off and then just tell the girl. Put a bag in the baggage. That's a joke. That's a okay, joke. You taste the banana. Put the banana in your mouth again. Yeah. It's still going to taste like condom. <laughs> Guys, I really got to like there. <laughs> oh, man. So, so there are teachers out there that show that activity with a sock. And they, they roll a sock onto their foot and pull it all the way up their leg. And then so they get fired. They're preparing for a shoot. They're turning activity. on all the kids yeah. from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to slip it into the shoe, and you're okay. You're oh. nice and safe. Oh, Nice gag. Sure it <laughs> Thank you. It was <laughs> from the heart, as we say in the business. <sighs> Where did we go hmm. from there? <laughs> well, I have a few other wait, wait. props, and since we're in the middle of the episode. Oh, go ahead. Even with condoms, certain diseases are transmissible. Which ones they are, you'll have to find out a little later in the episode. Ooh. Is that called a teaser? Uh, Is that the teaser? (laughs) So there's a few things that can prevent um, STDs and STIs. No, no, no. But I'm like, I want to be. No, I'm still just laughing at you gagging. That was the best. That was real. No, that was the worst. That was the worst. Yeah, no. I felt it down here. It was probably just here. Can we make this mandatory? Can this be the mandatory sex ed class? of like? It would teach a lot. (laughs) Can you imagine (laughs) if a priest was like, I want to teach sex ed. I want all the kids to taste a banana with a condom on it. Like we'd be like <laughs> the whole classroom. Yeah. And we'd be like, mm. the Father O'Malley, me. this sounds crazy, but let's do it. No, I do have I do have a rule. I have a not about that, but like I have a rule that no one's allowed to put anything in my ass unless I can do it back to them in some form. That's a good like, rule. Yeah. Sure. You're right. going to learn today. I can at least stick my finger in your ass. Get like tinier versions of that? Like micro machines? <laughs> Is the micro machine guy giving the voiceover? Yeah. Micro machine's going in your ass right now. <laughs> I just got a finger coming right in your butthole. <laughs> I forget what he sounds like. I just remember he had the smallest, <laughs> fastest voice yeah. of all time. So I apologize if he's the late whatever his name is. He probably passed it at this point. But anyway, I apologize to him. <laughs> Have you uh, practiced this more than twice? Practice sticking my finger in someone's ass? I mean, it, yeah. yes to both questions. Holler. Holler at that. He is still oh, alive. I- his, his name is John Machetta Jr. He's still alive? Yeah. Oh, they <laughs> shout out. Big follower of the podcast. He's going to be checking in tonight when he name searches, but mm. he's not going to like what he sees. <laughs> he's not. He's going to be like, with a banana. Huh. I never would have thought. But what I'd like to do for everyone at home, since this is like the sex ed portion, Mm -hmm. I want to talk about things that can actually prevent STDs. So number one was the good old condom. Okay. You can buy these for like, what are they, 15 bucks a piece, right? Yeah, a lot. I don't don't buy condoms. (laughs) So anyway, like 15 bucks a piece. uh, 15 bucks a pop. You buy two of them, 28 bucks, something like that. And you got to get that plastic cage around it off when you go to the grocery store, which makes no sense. Why are you preventing people from getting it, it is easily? weird. Because you don't want kids to get it, I guess? It? I don't no, know. no, no, no. It's because it's like the most common thing to steal, right? Because uh, like it's like, yeah. like no, I think no. every guy I know has stolen condoms at some point. Even if they didn't actually steal them, even if they just like nicked them from the common bowl at the health center, they still do it in like the weird like raptor way. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am. I'm down with that. I, um, I still think about the lady who rung me up at, um, the first time you bought right? condoms. No, the first time oh. I brought a pregnancy. Test. Oh yeah. The eyeball you like got, four, she looked you down four, 14. Ah, I still think about her quick, quick. She was like, and I bought a pack of gum to cover it up. <laughs> like, you put know, the gum on top of the package. She pulls <laughs> it like, away. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, uh, just buying some things today, ma'am. I'm 14. How are you? Like, I'm 12. I'm 8. How are you? So 
oh no, but something else you can buy at your local grocery store that will actually prevent pregnancy. Calculator. You bring this on a date, you're not getting pregnant. You're not getting an STD. You're not getting anything. Perfect. Boom. Saved you the trouble, folks. Why? Because you're going to calculate the cost of a child? Is that what? That would... No, that's not why. Daycare? Head phone cake. Like, you know like how the companies give... Nine and just play Snake for like the whole time? You could. Mm-hmm. You bring this on a date? Ah, the case that the company gives you for their headphones? You're probably not going to get an STD that night. Mm-hmm. The shirt that Nick's wearing. Stop it. That's an amazing <laughs> shirt. It highlights my eyes, which are red from pollen, folks, if you're wondering. From gagging. And from gagging. <laughs> Bring this on a date with gloves. Hey, sorry. Gotta clean up I just like to wear gloves. Blood? No. Clean up the blood? No. I just said you showed up on a date with this stuff. I don't <laughs> think you did this. <laughs> you pull it a yeah, knife, too. You're cool. like, hey, I'm, I'm a butcher. You I'm that. a butcher. Go on. You can still get an STD from someone you kill, though, by the way. Really? This isn't about murder. You're not going to have sexual contact with anyone. No, I mean, like, if... if They're dead? They're still one? I mean, yeah. It's a morgue? Hmm. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, if you're, like, a necrophiliac, you can still get an STD. Hmm. Well... It's not like your body's producing it. It's just, like, housing it. So you're just sort of going in there... It's like when you walk through a What's the a lake, time you know? frame? Like the body has to, like how old of a body are we talking here? Does it go away know. at some point? Probably eight days. Eventually, right? Because it doesn't days. like, but I mean, that's some of the stuff too with like, you think of Ebola, like the, the liquids would transmit oh, well God. after they had been expelled. Um, you know, the difference there is that it was like transmitted differently, but oh, cause. Oh, yep. Yeah, that would yeah. be gross. Yeah, but <laughs> necrophilia would would still do it. So, so we're a condom. <laughs> we'll bring, we'll bring a dental dam. <laughs> I want someone to bring a dental dam to the morgue. i will be like, I just have to take care of a few things. <laughs> and they're like, excuse me? He's like, don't worry. I brought something. And you're like, okay, sir. Have a nice day. Night? Gloves sir, on your, sir. your sponge. <laughs> you bring your gloves and your sponge and your, your dental, dental dam. <laughs> I thought you said we weren't going to get STDs on this date. <laughs> well, I just I brought a bunch of my nerdiest stuff and you guys, I don't think you like that. So. I, I enjoyed it. Hmm. Uh, if you bring Kohl's cash on a date, probably not going to get an STD. Yeah. I, uh, it's $20, but if I bring that up on the date, I, I don't think I'm getting an STD. To reference Nick's other friend Dan, the other way to not get an SCD is to like Star Wars. Oh, uh, actually, you, it's the opposite now. Oh, now, now it's, like it's cool. cool yeah, it is cool now. Disney is no longer PG. Oh, uh, actually, they did a study. Did you guys know this prevents SCDs? You can literally just pay someone enough money, SCD goes away. Boom. Hmm. Scientifically proven. So if you bring money with you, you can't get an STD. Let the record show. I am shaking my head. <laughs> she didn't say yes or no. So it's yes, folks. You know, there's kits that you can get. They get sent to your home and you can test for all your STDs. I think they're like almost 200 bucks, maybe 250 bucks. Hell no. Yeah. Depends on which ones. Like if you just want to get the basics, like chlamydia, gonorrhea, then, and that's usually what they test you for. So I'm actually, it worked out perfectly. I'm going to go get tested tomorrow morning. So Are you? Uh, oh, awareness. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, cool. I, uh, anytime I have a new sexual partner, even if I've used uh, protection, I, after a couple of weeks, will go get tested. Is this an announcement? Do you have a new sexual partner? I mean, it's it's still going to be relevant in a year. So. Oh, good point. Oh, well. No, I mean, it will. It will. It'll just like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the release of the podcast. Uh, you, can just, you can keep it as a reminder for me next year to like go okay. get tested. I'll be like, oh, yeah. Time I gotta Every go get two weeks. time. Look at the time. Oh, actually, no, but seriously, they give you shit for it. Like they don't mean to, but Dang. you go in and they ask, like, "Well, why? Do, why are you doing this?" And I'm like, "Cause I had sex." How many like, STDs does that person have? <laughs> Let's yeah. test you and compare, and then see what they say. 
Yeah, the scariest, <laughs> the scariest thing is when you talk to people and they say like, well, I trust him or I trust her. And I'm like, okay, but she trusts one other person probably. Mm-hmm. She trusts one other person and they trust mm-hmm. like, and there's somebody in there who trusts everybody. Um, You're doing the uh, all it takes is one and then one knows 10 and 10 knows one each and one yeah, each knows 10. All you need is love. It's just a Russian it's roulette. And uh, I think I think it's just better for... I don't know. Like I would, again, like my biggest fear with just sex in general <laughs> is that at some you point I'll have to call for someone it. up yeah. and be like, Hey, I mean, that's a responsible feeling. A lot of people who are more selfish would say, I hate that I'm going to get an STD from someone. Mm-hmm. At least your fear is that I'm responsible. And now I have to be responsible. So that shows you're a good person. Maybe a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. It is. It's a low bar, but that's all right. That's good. Mm. Hmm. Oof, just be awful. All right. So um, sometimes in guys' bathrooms, in the stalls, we will write things about girls. Some of my first STD names were written on um, Max Meyer's playground or like in the stalls in the bathrooms there. It's pretty uh, – it was pretty hood back in the day. But we would just write like – it was my first drawing of a, a pussy. It wasn't a vagina. It was a it was a pussy because it, it had the hair on it and it had the word pussy over it. And I didn't know what I was looking at. Well, it's crazy because now I'm an adult, but I still write stuff on the bathroom walls because that's just what I was taught to do. So I'll write like Jessica has lymphogaramolia venerium. And I'm like, oh, oh snap. Shit. Sometimes I'll even write, um, you know, Donna is all about non-gonocal urethritis. Oh, bitch. <laughs> and I was going to do this for every STD I could find, but do you guys know how many there are? A couple dozen. Dozens. That's what I was going with. Oh, that makes. I wrote down like tw- eighteen of them. There's really only like a big ten, and then everything else is like minor, kind of. Did you guys yeah. find that? Yeah. Well, and it kind of like it kind of depends on. It's hard, right? Because forever, you know, HIV is like the one that that rules them all. Sure. Um, like, but like, you know, if you can avoid sex. one, avoid that one. Yes. Do avoid that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, forever it's been herpes, you know, and there's HIV and then there's herpes because it's never going away. Um, mm-hmm. It's painful. It's itchy. It's like awful. I don't, I have HSV1. I don't have HSV2. Uh, maybe in a year that'll be different, you know, God bless. Ask me if God any bless. person is out there, like mm-hmm. give me, you can ask, um, mm-hmm. if you're having sex with me, not just generally, please. I don't stop me on the streets. <laughs> share everything. HSV two yet in a certain, in the grocery store. <laughs> I saw you on the podcast. HSV two yet. Yeah, yeah. So forever it's been, it's been herpes. Cause like you can't get rid of it, but now there's a bunch of like, pretty good prophylactic drugs where mm. you can keep those those outbreaks really low and it's Prevent. it's not like it's not that bad of, of diseases you could get and not get rid of that's pretty good the one that's really scary to me right now is gonorrhea um because a lot of that is becoming really resistant to antibiotics and so it used to be something yeah you get gonorrhea like chlamydia you can treat chlamydia with like so many different antibiotics you pop it with chlamydia and they give you like a joke <laughs> Whoa, and like, geez, bye gonna mess up my microbiome but gonorrhea is getting to the point where it's it's kind of scary and it shares dna with itself pretty well so we could end up with situations where people are actually dying of gonorrhea um gonorrhea is the one that's um the bacteria resistant blah blah blah. it's taking on right yeah that's what we're getting that's where we're headed yeah and that's the one you said was up by like 67 percent or something awful Hmm. Yes, 67% increase, probably because of the antibacterial resistance type thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, it's one that, it spreads really easily. It, I mean, like, that's that's why they check for gonorrhea and chlamydia. So HIV is a huge deal and nothing should ever minimize it. Mm-hmm. It's relatively hard to transmit compared to other, to the others. STIs. Is um, this one skin to skin or whatever? Or does it have to be liquids? I have no idea. Skin. I actually get I that. Is it... <clears throat> That's yeah, what makes most it the of the like has to get to the mucous membrane, but but ultimately skinnish, yeah. skinnish, skinnish, skinnish. The um, what I found is 
a lot of my friends that I used to hang out with back in college were like 10 years older and liked comedy and stuff from 15 years before that. So like they like World War II jokes and stuff. And the old joke was, you see where I'm going? Hoove, who uh, has passed. The old joke was, ah, Hoove's mom gave me the old family tradition. And everyone would stop and he'd go, what's the family tradition? And we all go at once. And that's the clap. Hmm. Gonorrhea is the clap. And I never heard that joke ever, but as a kid, I knew what the clap was. Yeah, because it's. Why is gonorrhea called the clap? I've always wondered this. It's chlamydia. It's the clap. I thought. Is it? Yeah, gonorrhea is the clap. I've heard it both ways. Well, why don't you Google the hell out of it? Why is it called the clap? Gonorrhea. It is gonorrhea. It is. Boom! Shut up, chlamydia! Punch! 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 I don't know. I guess I got that wrong at my young age, and no one's ever taught me. <laughs> I don't I'm be like, hey, Dad, again. what's the clap? <laughs> what is the clap? Media. It ain't. I put my don't baseball mitt ball down, and he tells yeah. me a story about. You're going to have to turn your hat backwards, too. sit on the yeah. chair, and just sit on it and be like, well, son, your old man was wrong. It's gonorrhea. Oh, hmm. gonorrhea sounds rough. So chlamydia, chlamydia is one that often doesn't show. Chart chlamydia red. is fucking scary. It doesn't show up in men so often, and it makes women infertile. Oh, the, the thing that I pulled oh, up was like, yeah, yeah, like because if you don't get it treated, hmm? um, so it goes up in there and gets all in your fallopian tubes and things. Um, so it was like twenty four thousand women a year become infertile because of untreated Damn. chlamydia. Damn, yeah. wow. chlamydia. chlamydia, but gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, apparently, um, men know about that one often. Oh, it's uh, That's the one that's it's also <laughs> called the drip. Oh, uh, yeah. Is this uh, the one that was green? Discharge. You get green ooze, or is that... Discharge? Yeah, yeah. yeah. discharge. Oof. Hmm. See, that's skeeving me. I can't do it, guys. You're going to have to do it. I'm going to eat another banana. So I'll do a quick tangent. So I was listening to a podcast mm-hmm. about... Uh, it's from an HIV internist, which is a specialist in internal medicine. He actually said that... He would take diabetes, uh, or actually, he would take HIV over diabetes because HIV with the drugs nowadays is completely controllable, manageable. And when you're mm-hmm. on the drugs, it's not transmissible either. So it's pretty. pretty 100%. Good. Do you still have to announce it then? Hmm, that's a weird yeah. reality there. You, that is weird. The, the I laws. Think it, it's that question of like what matters the most to you? Is it about like. Well, we're not talking even moral. I'm talking legal. Yeah, if yeah. morally you should, I, I would 100. percent But there's a different. I just mean more of like like diabetes. You're never gonna give to another person. You're never gonna pass along to you. like. You can still have children without being mm-hmm. worried about it. So mm-hmm. I guess this was a dude saying this. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Biased from the dude perspective. Yeah. Well, I think he was also thinking from a medical perspective. Like if it's controllable, and you'll it's live. Manageable. Yeah diabetes like you it, it affects your diet and your dot you you do more with your diet than your sex life depending on who you are but probably 95 percent of people that's true so if hiv stays <clears throat> as hiv which is just the the viral version mm-hmm. like you're infected great if you get aids that messes up the whole Everything. thing so that's just a progression yeah. so hiv starts killing off your immune cells mm-hmm. um And so usually people don't die of AIDS. They die of like pneumonia because you get sick with some tiny thing. Um, This is really weird. So how much AIDS do you know research? Because I used to drink like a year or two ago and then do like research into the like T cell, uh, like all the different Hmm. practices of the T cells and get like really deep into it. Yeah. But it was while I was drinking and I'm drinking now and I'm starting to remember really in-depth weird stuff about AIDS and what they do to the cells Just and how it attacks stats. and how it does sort of did it like this it there's like a reduces your ability to fight any dude. sort of diseases no I was just yeah, going to say names, dude. Oh, if you had the names of the um, there's different cells that attacks in different orders and different ways there's like, like bacteriophage T-cell and then there's like a variety yeah, there's a variety of T-cells there, there yeah yeah and there's names for the T-cells and all that and, and I was like T-cells I think is what yeah, and I was getting real deep into it. There was like numbers connected. It was like a T five six T cell, and I was like, "Hell yeah!" I'd be drinking. I'd be like, "What else does that mother effort do?" And I was getting really into it. And then I I literally forgot about that until tonight. It's so weird. Hmm. I'm sorry. 
That was such an aside. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. But I got deep into AIDS research. One of the stats. And I don't have AIDS for anyone who thinks I lost that much weight. One of the st- – you did lose a lot of weight. One of the I stats did. that stood out, though, is he said that of anyone who books an appointment, there are – people that miss that appointment and if a person misses appointment an appointment for hiv testing 23 percent of those people result in death from hiv because they're never treated wow. so oh, yeah a cool. quarter of people but it's completely it's one four manageable another oh, scary it, thing yeah. is that because hiv testing isn't free everywhere people i was just gonna go, say cost hmm? yeah well, cd4 tests and donate blood to find out if they're hiv positive uh-huh Oh, oh, because so they, they'll tell you. That's a, that's, that's crazy. I didn't even think illegal. of that. If it doesn't get screened prop like what if you have an untraceable? <clears throat> so that's another thing well, is that it's in your blood. You need a certain amount to get tested for. If it's below that threshold where they can test it, you still have it technically. It's just not detectable. Yeah, threshold is probably really low. They'd probably have to set that at some extreme low bar. I think it is pretty low. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's a super big issue um it's that i think the issue is just getting it for free by trying to donate your blood yeah it's because it's it's more cost efficient than testing Mm -hmm. well i think that's the thing that as you know as a society we need to look at and say like okay let's say only one person accidentally get got infected by hiv or or none like let's Mm -hmm. say nobody had that issue you know there's still a ton of people who are passing it on without knowing. Um, right. And why I brought up like, well, was that a guy who said that? Is that if you're a woman and you have HIV, there's there's no like there's no proven or even like really tested way of making sure you don't pass it on to your, to your children. So like, I heard something crazy. Um, what was it? Last year there were. 918 cases of newborns in the U.S. that had syphilis. Yeah. I was like, oh, What's damn. About syphilis? I mean, sure, because we didn't get into it. It's kind of one of the big five. Yeah. The big it was five. easy to cure if you catch it early. Early. <clears throat> but if you if it goes untreated, it does awful things to your face. You lose your hair. Your nose gets eaten away. Um, yeah. And you go crazy. Yes. Like the big wigs, like they were big wigs because they had a lot of sex, share a lot of syphilis, lose their hair, and then wear a wig. Really? I didn't get that. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Like the old dudes with white wigs? Yeah. And they had like no nose parties. <laughs> like they were cool, trying to make themselves cool after they got the disease. No nose parties? Uh-huh. See, it's cool if you do that with like, I don't know. I was going to say, like, a cocaine party. Like, they're like, ah, we got bad noses. But, like, the other one's like, we got syphilis. <laughs> I guess both aren't really good. Are people no. going to cocaine parties where they're like, we got bad noses? No, I, it was, I just, it was my... Com- it's a crossover comparison. party. It's a- <laughs> <laughs> Let's mingle. Mingle different crowds, you know. Michael Jackson kind of foresees the whole thing. That'll be our new uh, dating site. We'll be like Jack no, no, no. Hey, you have one disease. He has another. Let's get it all out there. Cocaine. Do you like to party or do you like to party? <laughs> it works That's a great way. tagline. <laughs> do you like to party or do you like to party? <laughs> I don't. Either one sounds a little, a little too extreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you need to be worried about those people just just Maybe. like for them actually, not about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for them. <laughs> I think your your jeans got tighter when you said that. Do you like to party? Or do you like to party? I can just like see it shrink. Like to party. Party mm. ready. Mm. What didn't we cover? I feel like there's probably though so you mentioned a word prophylaxis. Yeah, very casually. People probably don't know oh, what that means. Oh yeah. Well, that's not my problem. Um, <laughs> um, prophylaxis means basically you're taking it. Um, it's it's the opposite of like a reactionary medication where normally you would take a medication once you get sick, once you have symptoms. Prophylaxis means that you're taking it before you're trying to help uh, prevent that illness. So um, you would take prophylactic drugs uh, either to prevent the d- symptoms if you already have a disease, so you might be preventing the uh, outbreak, mm-hmm. or you're going to be taking it 
um, when you haven't been uh, infected, uh, but you are at a risk of being infected. And so what they're really trying to get people to stay away from is relying solely on those prophylactic drugs where people, you know, the HIV prophylactic drugs are so good for, for drugs. Like they're so good. Um, but now people are saying like, Oh, they're, I don't need to worry about condoms anymore because HIV I'm will I'm covered. Work. I'm covered. Other STDs. One, you're gonna. There's so many other diseases, and two, if you miss like a day of that, things can get. Mm. Oh, and drinking alcohol, eat. other complications. Uh, mm, interesting. So, not worth it. I did read a story about how there's a CRISPR technique that changes uh, women's like cervical uh, genetic makeup, so that they now would off put pieces of proteins that then viruses and bacteria would bind to. I mean, viruses would bind to. So it's a, like a future preventative disease. It's a possibility that it's like another form of prophylaxis. That's interesting. Uh, that was cool. That, would, that could be really cool. It'd be interesting to see the interactions there. <clears throat> I saw someone recently, <laughs> it's a little tangential, but <clears throat> bring up the idea of asking our male partners to get, um, get their tubes tied mm -hmm. rather than having women have to get like, Dick uh, yeah, get like an IUD or something like that because it's, you know, reversible as reversible. Like both are painful, but one is adding hormones to our bodies for like five years. And every guy was like, no, 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 no. That's not normal. That's not okay. And so it's always interesting when these, these like options come up where I'm just hearing it as like, well, you can't trust someone to wear a condom, so I guess you should probably change how your body functions. <laughs> like, ugh, I don't know. It is entitlement. I just think like condoms need to be better. It's 2019. We can't come up with like a an option that's not off. They need to taste better too. <laughs> the flavored. Have you ever like tried the flavored lubes? They're yeah, they taste like disgusting. latex plus blueberry or whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's the strawberry flavored ones. They taste like blueberry. It's crazy. I got I to gotta write some letters to Trojan. Okay. Dear Trojan. Uh, it's like every yeah, diary. Yeah, they're terrible. They just they're feel awful. weird. Does anyone enjoy those? Which one? Half of the ones they make don't make any sense. They're just different <laughs> sensations. Literally, it's uh, just like the shapes. I think, the ridges, yeah, they the just bumps. have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have all different hot and gimmicks. Cold. It's it's literally just a gimmick. That's all it is. <laughs> Can they make like mazes? <laughs> <laughs> Draw on it to for foreplay. Sit on it and turn and twist <laughs> and go this way. Go down <laughs> and this way and over. Like and down. Braille. Spin it. To, like, turn it. Bop message. it. A little braille. Like, oh my god, it says I love you. Oh, it comes with a fortune cookie. I want to marry you. <laughs> I want to marry you. Oh. The, isn't there one that measures your heart rate like a Fitbit type thing, and how many <laughs> how many pumps, pumps you had, and then like yeah, 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 and like how fast they were, and something like that? I think there is one that could be there a challenge. Works like that. Everyone in the office. I <laughs> Who I had the most pumps this week? <laughs> Nick, why did it say three pumps and you were done? <laughs> <laughs> it was Wednesday, Efficiency. boss. Yeah, I was just super. Efficient. They were big pumps. <laughs> Your your flow is a little low though, Nick. Yeah. No, your flow is huge, Nick. Congratulations, you won the <laughs> office pool. We just why only ten seconds? <laughs> I don't know, boss. I got I got work to do. Okay. I went out and ran a mile. What did you do, boss? That's what Sometimes I would say. My wife better. For the record, I'm not a one pump chump. Uh, and Ooh, for the record, <laughs> thank you, guys. But for anyone listening, in case this gets released when I'm single, I can give multiple pumps, okay? And the condom that fit on that banana barely fits on me. It goes to like here. You know what I'm <laughs> if it's backwards. <laughs> it was backwards. And I did figure out like a couple weeks later that I'm like normal, but like, like barely fits in the normal condom, okay? This is for the record. Barely. I'm like... I don't know what the next tier is, but I'm thinking of buying them. 
I've heard they're awful. Really? Apparently, because like you see them, you're like, because the other ones, you can put your whole arm in them, but the other, they're just thicker. Like, oh, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have seen one. I have it's like, oh, one. It's like weird. It's like a sleeve. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Mm-mm. So. <laughs> ah. Ha. Huh. So STDs. Whenever, whenever guys are bummed about their dick being too small, that's that's what you get. You get that's what you get, you <laughs> big dick condom. bastards. Yeah. Well, oh, big Pete. dick guys, they got to wear like the little like sock. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they just wear a sock. Has that ever happened? Do you think? I guarantee that's happened somewhere. Did you use different like uh, no block bag? worn a sock? <gasps> I have the best story. Yeah. It's oh, not personal. Please do it. Please so do it. Please do it. it is yeah, good. And you can give it to it. Uh, the best, it was in high school and this guy, it must've been like early high school, but apparently, and it was confirmed by the girl. Apparently <laughs> this guy confirmed. went down on this girl and like, he was so worried about STIs that he got saran wrap and like, just like, <gasps> set and, and, and we're just licking saran wrap. Yeah. My man. I like that. That guy's got, Spunk and pizzazz. Oh, so that, That's, hmm. Ugh. So he can't get an STD that way, right? Wow. Give me fine. That's a that I fully endorse the put saran wrap on women and hmm. sort of eat them out. Saran wrap this, folks. Well, so they didn't box any like saran wrap extra smells or anything that might be coming down there. So there's one time if what. STDs? One time yeah. I was getting busy with a girl and like, well, I guess this is almost every time. So like when you get in a certain distance, <laughs> like sometimes it's off-putting. So the saran wrap makes sense because then you could protect yourself from whatever you're about to get in in there with. Oh, uh, are you talking about Red Wings, dude? Uh, n- no, this time, I don't know. Maybe she did have an SDI and I was like, just like, Phew. like once you get that close, it's already a contract. It's like you made the move. You can't be like, well, uh, I'd rather just do, it's like, in my mind, I'm thinking that she knows that I don't want to. Good point, and that's no, kind of what you touched on earlier. To pick that out. There is a way to back out of that. What's, what's the? Are you doing the? I got a thing. I or, gotta uh, go. Uh, no, 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 no. You just like, add work. spit. You just pretend you're down there to like add spit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Get it lubricated. Well, no, 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 no. You kiss it. You kiss an inch above that. You kiss an inch above that, and you just keep it inching up until you're all the way up, and you're like, I'm done. Uh, that would work. You oh, die, you dive that. bomb, and then you pull up out of the dive bomb. I know, no, no. I got, I have moves for days. You guys, yeah, hopefully. you guys are too young. You got a lot of moves to get out of doing things. <laughs> uh, listen, hon, I have to get to work. Oh, <laughs> yeah. mm. wrap. That's nice. You imagine if you use tinfoil instead. He had the wrong <laughs> that's all, that's all he, he used the wrong roll, and he was like, "God damn it, let's just go." With keep it. pulling, and she was like, "She shoes. was like, throw it in the microwave, warm it up." And he just did it without thinking, and then he microwaved the tinfoil and caught on fire. Ugh. Oh, I also a guy that I had dated the first time. This poor child. He, <laughs> he was an adult for the adult for children. The audience, correct. He, we were both seventeen, so uh, but Legal. he. He was 17. I actually never had sex with him. But the first time he had sex, he flushed the condom and it seemed fine. His parents came back the next day. And no. Stuck. Yeah. It, they, came it, back it got up. stuck and they had to call a plumber. A plumber for a condom? How much cum did he? No, no, no. It was just like it got stuck in the in the tubing. It was like blocking up the, the toilet. Hmm. I can still taste oh the condom. God. Yeah, no, it'll be there tomorrow morning. That's gross. Even after the, uh, oh yeah, alcohol drink. Yo, yeah, condoms <laughs> taste like shame. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of do, you know? Because <laughs> okay, look, I hundred percent. Everyone should use a condom and use protection anytime they're having any sort of sex. Absolutely, we a hundred percent endorse that. If anyone at home is listening, just do it. But when you wake up and your mouth tastes like condom, you're like. I hooked up with somebody where right. neither of us trust the other person and enough. Let's say you're over 25 and you're listening and you get it. What are they getting? It's Italian. They get it. Oh, okay. okay. They get it. You don't need it. I'm just kidding. You need it. Just do it. But <laughs> yeah. He's making motions with his hands for the people listening. 
for the, for, for the Italian listeners, he's doing the throat maneuver left to right around his throat and then the throw it away. doesn't fit okay. anyway. That's the Nick move. That's that's my move. It doesn't, doesn't fit anyway. Fit it. Whoops. <laughs> oh. Uh, so we covered a lot of stuff tonight, guys. Mm-hmm. We talked about STDs, STIs. Talk about the criminality we, of it? No, go ahead. Let's see. What you got? So if you're willfully infecting somebody with HIV, it's a crime. Hey, what is the punishment? I really don't know. Is it different state by state? It, you, I mean, people have been charged for attempted murder. So you can be... What's attempted murder, by the way, running right now? Uh, Just, I'm asking for a friend. How many years? Yeah. And also, we didn't cover my favorite one, crabs. <laughs> I have crabs. Like You have crabs? Well, no, I like uh, two weeks ago. Five to 15 years. Okay. We did like a football party. We got crabs. What? Did you eat crabs? We're, yeah, we ate crabs. Oh, yeah. oh, the STD. I forgot. Crabs and pubic lice are not like crabs from the ocean. Oh. And the clap is gonorrhea, apparently. And the clap is gonorrhea. Another thing we learned tonight is that most men you know have HPV. Most everybody or, has that. Hold it's on. Like one in or four. one in three, mm-hmm. maybe. One in four. Or if you dated a girl for a long time and you broke up with her and then you get back together with her and then you broke up with her and you get back together with her and then you broke up with her. And like two years later, she may have slept with like two or three people in between. She called you and said that she had um, HPV. A chance at. A, a chance at HPV. Uh, what can HPV call us? Endometriitis or uh, some kind of cervical cancer or some kind of something. Endometriosis. Is, yeah. There you go. That's possible. And then they said it had to be you. Had to be you. It was you. But it wasn't. And you were like a little bit like, <laughs> gotcha. But a little bit like. <sighs> Is she a criminal? Everybody has HPV. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Actually, Wait, I, I'm young enough that I got the... I, I'm young enough that I got the Gardasils. What's that? I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the, the shot that, like, I Oh, was, that's what I was... I literally asked about that. It, oh, so there's okay. a new vaccine for it, right? Yeah, so it's three It's three shots. It's, like, the most painful shots I've ever gotten. Um, uh, Wade endorsed it for the uh, podcast there. Just Thanks. in the arm. Um, but... Yeah, I got all three shots, uh, and so I i don't think I have HPV. The shots are super <laughs> effective against the most common strains, and those are the ones that cause cervical cancer uh, generally. So um, unless I have a rare strain, I'm, I'm probably good on HPV. Cool. 2006, it was approved. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, it was Girls like 10 years women, ago. 2011, yeah. Yeah, because it was a big Stuff. controversy. Should Room my science. daughter get? Oh. I hate this crap. Should my daughter get vaccinated against HPV? Then she's going to go and have sexual intercourse with everyone. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, sir. This is so she doesn't get HPV. But thank you. Does not treat the existing infection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, folks. Let's wrap it up tonight. The criminality. I gotta, Wait, go, I gotta go give right. three pumps. What? Jesus. The, the criminality. You didn't let, didn't let me finish. No, the, uh, like, usually attempted murder is. Long. Like, mm, mm, I like to savor my moments. Last longer than three pumps. So the criminality is that, uh, in most cases, you're, like, attempted murder show, has to show intent, but mm. you don't necessarily have to show intent when you're transmitting HIV to get charged with it. That's what I like to say. So if you know you have it, you're essentially committing attempted murder without sharing that information with your partner. Hmm. Same thing for other STDs. Is that true if you like even use a condom? Is it just having Ooh. penetrative sex? I think that's an attempt at being prepared. What if you jerk off across the room and shoot your commoner? <laughs> what, you, what if your spray is, is 10 feet long? Oh my God, I gotta tell you guys something after this is over. <laughs> <laughs> He's got... <laughs> distance check you're losing distance in time over age i gotta tell you something about losing weight 
Okay. Oh, God. <clears throat> Gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, mycoplasma genitalium, trichomaniasis. That's my favorite one. Yeah, no one knows. Human papillomavirus. That. Everyone friggin' loves it. Everyone has it. It's everywhere. Are you trying to say chlamydia trachomatis? Oh, Trich- really? Trico- yeah, that might be it. Yeah. Okay. Trichomoniasis. This is maniasis. Oh, maniasis. That's different. That's something different. Yeah, that's a different one. Scabies, crabs, pubic lice, HIV, AIDS, herpes, HSV, hepatitis. We didn't talk about hepatitis. That's one of my favorite ones. Hmm. All these things. Chancroid. Like stigma. Ah, chancroid. I've had chancroid six times. No big deal. Bacterial vaginosis. Had it twice. Came over it. <laughs> Molluscum contagiosum. That sounds like a, like a Latin, like, I don't know. Don't come in here for guys. Oh, this is my favorite one. Methicillian resistant staphylococcus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's my man. Staphyl- <laughs> Snuffleupagus. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Can I help you with that? <laughs> that, was, you can- that was staphylococcus. Isn't that what I said? Rewind yeah. the tape. Probably That's what I said. Guess. Exactly the same. <laughs> Watch out for that. Anyway, we covered everything, folks. We talked to the Center for Disease Control Prevention in 2017. Susanna. Oh, my God. I just blanked on your last name for a second. Harris. Oh, Harris. I oh, mean, Harris. after this episode, it would be fine if people didn't know it. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Check out all the stuff we do. We mm-hmm. donate to a lot of charities. We got a lot of different causes. I know you're all busy at home. You just watched four hours, and the year is 2027. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to exist indefinitely on the internet, so they could listen, yeah, listen yeah, to yeah. it much after that. They could listen to it in 2040. I don't care. Folks, it was great having you. I loved it. We talked about all these beautiful, beautiful sores that show up on our genitals. And I just want you to share that with your family. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. And for God's sake, folks. Kiss on the lips. Get tested. Everybody. I was going to get tested. Even Nick's family. Whoa, my family kisses on the lips every time we see each other. It's weird, but we got to do what we got to do. And I got to get this latex taste off my mouth, so. Anyone else have anything to add or anything you want to plug? Yeah. Are you doing any speeches anywhere? Are you doing anything for anyone? You're staring down. What are you doing? Susanna. She's, she's going to be a PhD. She's a doctor of microbiology well, by the time. I mean, who the hell knows? By the time this <laughs> episode comes out, it'll be a – I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, my, my tidbit is like it's going to be – oh, my, the best piece of a sex advice my parents ever gave me, my mom told me, on the lips. She, she said, um, don't have sex with someone you're not willing to talk with. And like, I know it sounds like a silly thing, but I, I really think it's true. Like sex can be the most awkward, horrific, just like weird experience um, in like whether it's condoms being weird or like sounds or, you know unexpected periods or there's so many things um but like try to sleep with people you can talk to because then you might be feel more comfortable using protection or at least knowing that they got tested so uh you know you don't want one night of of comfort or enjoyment to mean a lot of time in uncomfortable situations explaining to other people hey it's the second date I've got HSV too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Nights of endless. Thanks for passion. admitting it on the podcast, Susanna. Anyway, Dan, anything to add? Yeah, you can have nights of endless passion more than any laws allow. But um, <laughs> <laughs> quote a song. <laughs> but you know, it's more than just the physical. <clears throat> you can share physical things. You can share emotional things. Discussion. That sort of stuff can get you off too. To just be talked to an orgasm. If you've ever experienced that. No. No, never. You've oh, been you sex. Sex is fucking with you. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sighs> but there's it, it's like the driving purpose from when you turn thirteen, hit puberty, and move into to when you turn the prime age of right sharing there? it. Yeah, sixteen to twenty five. You said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, it was like fourteen to twenty five. Yeah. Take the time to know what you're getting into identify herpes on other people what other 
diseases they might have. They are like scabby, just like what what is that? Did you get that? Let me swap that real quick. Who did you have sex with previously? Can I get a list? Can I call them? Can I check in? Can I make sure they're doing okay? Do they have Yelp reviews? I care you, very much about getting How many stars out of five? All right. Hmm. Well, thanks, guys. I thank everyone who tuned in tonight. You can check out Susanna's stuff. She's going to delete it since here because she didn't make her doctorate. She turned into a junkie, and now she's just spreading whatever disease it is. <laughs> yep. God bless her. Spreading it for money, so. Keep donating Go that ahead. blood. You can also donate to me and Dan here at syphilis.com. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. I forget our Patreon, but you can donate. Uh, we love to hear from our fans. We love to hear from everyone. Yeah, spread the Oops. word like syphilis. Everyone at home. Or gonorrhea, which is huge right now. Spread the word. Spread it, folks. Spread whatever you can, whether it's scabies, chancroid, bacterial vaginosis. You get out there and spread it. Most of all, though, get tested. Because we like you. We like you a lot. Good night.